just to kind of double click on your concept, the personal fat threshold, I guess a phrase that I believe that you coined that. The personal fat threshold speaks to how much fat you can store subcutaneously. Is that right? Yes, that is the essence of it. Um, although there is also a lever component. So some people can be very large and obviously have fat under the skin, excess fat under the skin, but be metabolically normal. Relatively small percentage, but this is entirely recognized. At the other end of the scale, there are some severe genetic conditions with absence of subcutaneous fat. And guess what? They have high levels of liver fat, high levels of fat delivered to the pancreas, and a proportion of people get type 2 diabetes. Now, a very high proportion compared to other thin people. But even so, it's not 100% because some people have the problem with storing fat and the good kind of beta cell that doesn't bother about fat being on their doorstep. So, yes, the personal fat threshold uh, is largely a matter of being able to hold fat in the tissues under the skin and remain metabolically safe. If you exceed your personal fat threshold, you're likely to have diabetes if you're susceptible to it. And so in our recent study, the Retune study, we found that getting people in the normal or near normal body mass index range to lose an average of 6.5% of the body weight, they became non-diabetic. 70% became non-diabetic. So we need to set in context this unfortunate idea that doctors and nurses tend to cling to, that if you have a normal body mass index, you mustn't lose weight. Well, that's absurd, because the concept of normal is rooted in a population and the advice is being given to one person in the consultation. We're all individuals, and I know from my patients that everyone likes being treated as an individual. That person there, which I think is about one out of six people with type 2 diabetes, is that right, who have a normal BMI? What you're saying is that despite the normal BMI, and from the outside, looking at this person, you, you may believe that they don't have any weight to lose, that person has exceeded their individual personal fat threshold and has excessive fat in the liver and pancreas to the point where things like fasting blood glucose and their HbA1c are putting them into pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes kind of territory. That's correct. Okay. And the retune study that you just did recently that you just mentioned there that was if i if i'm if i uh have got this right that was the intent there was to see if type 2 diabetes in people of normal bmi shared the same etiology the same kind of cause as type 2 diabetes in people that had were overweight or obese. So within this study, you were able to actually measure that with the, the reduction of fat in the liver and in the pancreas in these people that have a normal BMI, with that insulin resistance reduced and blood glucose normalized? That's absolutely correct. All the processes that we had shown underlay diabetes in people who were overweight or obese were exactly the same in people who had normal weight. Now, we were able to chase the fat and show that the liver fat was high. The VLDL triglyceride that we've mentioned before, that's high. So the minute by minute, second by second delivery of fat to the insulin producing cell, the, the level of fat in the pancreas is just a marker for that. But that delivery of fat continues and the Relief of fat when people lose weight is associated with recovery of ability to make insulin. So yes, the Retune study looked under the bonnet and saw the mechanisms of diabetes are exactly the same 
in these slim people as in heavier people, again underlying the fact that type 2 diabetes is a condition of homogenous etiology, although in heterogeneous individuals. So if someone's listening and they're thinking, gosh, I'm, I'm in the normal BMI category, I'd love to know if I have exceeded my personal fat threshold, would I be right in assuming a, a basic blood test that includes triglycerides and fasting blood glucose and perhaps ApoB or non-HDL, that those sorts of markers along with you know, waist circumference are going to be a, a window into whether you've exceeded your personal fat threshold or not? I can't say that we can be absolutely sure on the basis of measurements. Uh, I can give a few guides. Yes, a person who's exceeded their personal fat threshold is likely to have a moderately raised insulin level, are likely to have a moderately raised fat level, triglyceride level, um, and also they're likely to have gained weight in adult life. So many people regard themselves as being normal weight, but they're comparing themselves with their, uh, their friends of similar age, all of whom have put on weight. And when we ask the critical question, can you wear the same trouser waistband as you wore when you were 21? Then people get it. They can't fit into the size, say, 32-inch trousers they wore at the age of 21. Uh, they're now 35, and they think that's okay. Well, it might be okay for most people, but it might not be for them. So you see, it's a matter of likelihood, and all I can say is that the personal fat threshold can only be defined exactly if a person has type 2 diabetes, loses weight, and discovers for themselves where that threshold lies. For some people, and we know this from our biggest study, the direct study, some people need to lose all 15 kilograms. In fact, one person needed to go on to 20 kilograms to get rid of the, the fat sufficient to get rid of their uh, excess above the personal threshold. But some people only needed to lose a small amount. The majority needed to lose at least 10 kilograms. So you see, that's how the personal fat threshold works. But at the moment, despite my best efforts, we've tried to develop ways of measuring it. I can't offer any concrete way of knowing for certain. There's only a matter of degrees of risk at the present time. And you said there, the only way of knowing is to, to lose weight. And I'm assuming to, to there, you're mainly keeping an eye on blood glucose and I say this with the definition of remission, I guess, in mind here, you'd be looking at blood glucose returning to the normal range without any type of blood glucose lowering medications. Is that how you would know that you are below the personal fat threshold? Yes, that's the, that's the final arbiter. And also we would expect the level of triglyceride to have fallen by 30%. You know, it's 50% raised at baseline, coming down to normal, is a fall of uh, 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 30%.